The Book of True Life, Teaching of the Divine Master, Volume 9, Teaching 270. Blessed are those who on the last day of my communication are prepared, because truly I tell you that their spirit will be present in my new cynical upper room. There, receiving for the last time this invisible bread, true unleavened bread, your spirit will be strengthened, saturated with spirituality and light, with which you will soon understand the essence of this doctrine. 2. What a solemnity in that last hour! How much light on this people! 3. The kingdom of heaven will approach your spirit with its eternal invitation to dwell in it. The great spirits, the strong, the spirits of light, true sages in the spiritual realm, will be present in those moments. 4. The forerunners, the prophets, those who once brought divine messages to earth will make an appearance, because my word has been for all spirits, whether they are incarnated or free from matter. 5. Those beings will be representatives of the infinite abodes that exist in the universe and will attend the last of my manifestations that in this form I have given you at this time. 6. What will they contemplate among this people? What will they discover? Only I know it, but I charge you to watch and pray, so that you be one of those who sit at the table, one of those who come to enjoy the Master, one of those who come to eat and drink the bread and wine of heaven, that you are not going to come to the table plotting betrayals, because only in appearance will you have been with me, because in reality, your consciousness will not allow you to enjoy my presence. 7. Do you know why I speak to you in this way? because I know what will happen, because I know you perfectly and I know who will deny and who will be faithful to me. I know who will remain faithful because they have studied my word and who will get confused because they have never analyzed the background of my work. 8. While some were only interested in the essence of my word and always yearned for the progress and evolution of their spirit, others liked the outward worship more. Thus, while the former recreated receiving teachings on spirituality, others resented that their mistakes were mentioned. 9. Only I know who will answer me for everything that, having been known through my spokespersons, has been detained. 10. Understand, people, that in this third era, as witnesses that you have been of this divine manifestation, you have the mission to extend this message with all fidelity and truth, that you have been called and chosen to bring the good news. To humanity, teaching your brothers the spiritual path, the only one that leads you to peace, to the true light and universal brotherhood. 11. Extensive has been the time that I consecrated to teach you, but, if the last listen to me little, I leave for them my written word, so that they may seek in it the divine essence and all reach the same understanding and spirituality. 12. In following this path, you have no ideal other than that of the perfecting of your spirit, a perfecting that you can achieve by putting my doctrine into practice, living my teachings, consecrating your existence in the service of your fellow men in continuous compliance with divine laws and human laws. 13. Many of you fought for your material life, now is the time to work for the spirit. 14. Both struggles are different in essence, because while the human struggle is selfish because it is necessary to work for oneself itself, the spiritual struggle must be absolutely disinterested, you must sow your path with love and charity without expect of reward. 15. Try to penetrate and understand my teachings in such a way that you understand that in the practice of a high life, clean and spiritual, is where there are the greatest satisfactions, the greatest joys, the true triumphs and eternal. 16. The spirit, when it rises above the materiality of the world and the reticence of matter, has to contemplate life through the light of truth. That is when he discovers what is real and what is false. 17. I am pleased that in the spirit of my children there is peace and it fills me with joy that the heart of man experiences joy. I only want you to seek what is true, for which I give you the means in my word. 18. And truly I say to you, blessed are those who are not familiar with my word. Blessed are those who obey and they respect my mandates, because they will be the ones who give testimony of my work. They are the ones that correspond with love to love that in my word I show you. They are those who have charity and gratitude towards these spokesmen who are leaving their lives in this people. 19. But how many have become familiar with my manifestation? 
They attend my teachings like someone who is going to witness a rite or to fulfill a tradition, and that is not the fulfillment that I expect from my people. 20. The moment has not yet come when all of you take my work in spiritual form. Observe how while some of my peasants become humble and charitable as I pour out blessings on them, others become proud and selfish, believing to be each time superior to their brothers. 21. The former work in silence, in humility, in spiritual intimacy. The second can't be happy if they do not live surrounded by flattery, praise and homage, enjoying. The humiliation of their little and weak brothers, these are not my disciples, because never have my examples, my doctrine or my revelations taught them such actions. 22. To those of you who have carved that pedestal of vanities, I say with love that you descend from it, by conviction, by repentance, if you do not want the same people who raised you today to demolish you, as has always happened to men who have sat on a throne of false power to humiliate their fellow men from it. 23. To those who have worked with humility, sowing with love the blessed seed of spiritual charity, I say to you continue sowing, may you continue to collect the tears of those who suffer, may you continue to shine light on the paths of darkness, ignorance, vice, and confusion. That is the way, that is the mission of the worker of Christ. 24. I want one and the other united in my work, linked by faith, harmonizing in spirituality, walking through the same path under the weight of the same cross. 25. Do not propagate through the world that you are masters in spirituality. Do not even say that you are disciples. Moreover, try to make your works be most faithfully attached to my truth and they will testify for you. 26. In the difficult hours of your life, in the great trials, invoke me with the Spirit, without outwardly calling nobody's attention and I will make my presence and my power felt. 27. My countryside is infinite. How can there be anyone who believes that it is limited in these areas where you listen to my word? 28. My spiritual fields are all over the earth, wherever a man dwells or a spirit exists. My countryside extends beyond this world, reaching all the dwellings where there is a need for light, for peace, for spiritual cultivation, purification, and improvement. 29. Let your concepts expand. Let your mind break the circle in which it has been closed and your spirit frees itself from those chains with which matter has held him, so that he contemplates the infinite and saturates himself with the eternal. 30. The time is coming when men come to you to scrutinize this doctrine. It will not have merit that show my word to defend yourselves, since it, coming from me, is clean and perfect in its essence. Merit will be that scrutinize you, discover in my people a humble and clean life, men and women who know how to dedicate a part of her time to the practice of charity, which in its wake leave a trace of comfort and light. That will be the living testimony that you give to the world, testimony presented through works, not words. 31. It is well that the gift of speech will have to flourish on your lips to move the hearts of your brothers, but it will be the works that confirm each of your words. 32. Do you think that my disciples of the second era were specified to repeat what they heard from their master? No, people. It is true that the light poured into the word that came from his lips, but her works, her deeds were as numerous as his words. For this reason his sowing was fruitful and abundant. 33. That is why I say to you, recreate your spirit in my word, O people. You can still enjoy this grace for a brief time. Make of your heart a chest in which you keep all the essence of my teachings, and that your spirit is the ark where my wisdom is deposited. 34. The day is coming when these nightingales stop chirping in the branches of this tree and I don't want them to later go to mourn the wasted times. 35. When the time comes to close this stage of communications, I will have already given you everything you need for your spiritual journey. You will lack nothing. 36. I have endowed you with weapons and light so that you may be able to face that time announced by me, in which I have told you that men will try to destroy the faith among themselves that the love of God is fought as never before. Plus I am leaving in you this bread of life so that you can raise up those hungry for light, balm to heal physical pain and that of the spirit, power to stop those who stray from the true path. 37. 
Prepare so that those times do not surprise you because if you sleep, you will wake up from your lethargy terrified of painful events. Then you will not be able to think of others, you will think of yourself when more in your children, parents, spouses or brothers and I want you to forget about yourself, who you are and what you have so that your spirit can take care of its highest mission which is to love God in his own likeness. 38. I want you to love your brothers as if you knew them for this to know that they exist. 39. Unite so that you form the strong people, the new Israel that knows how to make its way through persecutions, vicissitudes and obstacles, following step by step the luminous path of my law, inspired by the divine promise of my peace. 40. You are both spiritually and by blood, a people who fight for peace and for their freedom, who have learned a lot about the yoke of the flesh and of humiliation. Truly I tell you, it is there, in that bitter chalice, where your spirit has been refined and tempered. 41. Do not let the ideal of light, freedom and peace die, that you understand that this spiritual path that I offer you will certainly be the goal for men of faith and goodwill. 42. My justice, manifesting itself in its fullness over the world, will help you to witness, it will help you to convert and prepare the walking trails. 43. The thirst for truth will become very great in humanity, and it will be necessary to give it the crystalline water of my teaching to not succumb. Always bear in mind that the men of this time, due to their spiritual evolution, are no longer able to deceive, that the world is about to open its eyes fully to the light, to say, this is the good and this is the wrong, this is the light and this is the darkness, and he no longer wants to walk on crooked paths, nor lose himself in rites and traditions. 44. The long path of experience, free will, disobedience and evil has already been traveled by humanity and she is approaching her goal, where she will arrive confused, but where you will also see how light is made in it. 45. Consciousness, like a fine sort of light, will fight against darkness, preventing the spirit from being troubled, and when you become calm and able to look at and judge your past, a succession of miracles will run through your mind, strengthening you to never go back. 46. My word will shine before you in those moments, like the lighthouse on stormy nights, illuminating the route of the lost. 47. Would it be fair that by that time you had not reached the proper preparation? 48. You well know that you are not indispensable for the spiritual redemption of humanity, but what would become of your mission? 49. I can do everything without you, but what would you answer me when I called you? 50. Disciples. After praying, weigh your responsibility and measure the scope of your mission. You do not ignore it since I have told you about it extensively. 51. I come to you to strengthen you with words of love and wisdom. You are on the eve of great events. I have announced to you that the world will be shaken in the year 1950. These events will mark the last year of my communication and my departure so that when men are interested in seeking the truth of my manifestation and the facts that surrounded it, find that the same when my communication began in 1866, as when its end 1950, the heavens, nature and human life were moved. 52. Think of the world of tomorrow, beloved people, of the men who will be anxiously searching for signs of my presence. Think that you are going to remain as faithful witnesses of all that you have seen and heard from me. 53. Just as my teaching has been extensive, so should your testimony be, so that you do not leave the slightest doubt or confusion in none of your brothers. 54. Engrave well in your heart, that it will not be with external and impressive acts with which you try to persuade your brothers, it must be with the spiritual essence of my doctrine. You could impress those who come with a burden of sufferings in search of comfort, and who in their longing to find relief from their pain do not even notice the way with which they receive the bomb. But, think that. They will open their eyes and understand that it was not delivered to them in all its purity the bomb that the peasants received from me. Truly I tell you, the sowing done in this way will give many vain fruits. 55. The peasant who cements his work in the practice of a true charity, well understood, that in addition to bringing relief to the ills of the body, kindle the light of faith in God, and impart spiritual knowledge. The one who forgot himself, dedicate a few moments to the service of your fellow men, 
that will make you feel spiritualism in your brothers. Feel my presence through their works and therefore their plot will be fertile and their harvest will be good and abundant. 56. I must tell your spirit the mission entrusted to it. Do not deceive yourselves, that in advance analyze your intentions, the purpose of your works and so that you understand what may be the result that you get. 57. You are my disciples and you must live alert so that you listen to the voice of the consciousness before carrying out a work. Then you will set the goal that you want to achieve beyond this life, recognizing that here you will only accumulate merits to make you worthy to inhabit a world of light. What does it matter that, with your help, others arrive before you? Higher will be your merit because that will mean that you thought more of them than of yourselves. 58. Delicate is the path of the spiritualist, since he cannot be worthily called a disciple of this doctrine, who after receiving the lesson, harbor hatred, selfishness, hypocrisy, or ill will. 59. In the spiritualist there must be peace, faith, charity, forgiveness, smile, understanding, indulgence, and tenderness, to be poured out like balm on those who suffer. But on the other hand, there must be zeal, strength, and energy in your heart before those who alter the truth, hide it or sell it. 60. I give you clean my seed and I offer you fields prepared to sow it, for which there is no reason for your return to bring me bad fruit. 61. Take my word and seriously meditate on it and you will feel how it becomes a fine chisel, which, penetrating deep within your being, a work of polishing will begin in your heart. 62. Understand, people, that my call has been to make known to you the mission that you are going to fulfill on earth. Already your spirit knew what it had been sent to do, but your matter also needed to receive the revelation, so that it was willing to work with the spirit, forming both a single being and a single will. 63. After hearing these revelations, could any of you be unaware of their mission? Could your spirit run away and give up the fight? It would be childish to want to run away from your own destiny, to pretend to get away from yourself. What place could you find in this world or in others, where my voice will not reach? None, because my voice is your light. Moreover, who can flee from this time of trials? Wherever you retired, their purification would follow. 64. Truly I tell you that security and peace can only be found in the performance and fulfillment of the law that I have trusted. The merits that your spirit makes within the path of love, which are charity and fraternity, will be reflected in your human life, in peace, in tranquility, in confidence and health. 65. In the first era the people made a pact with their Lord and swore to comply with the law. Now I don't want you to swear, I want your impulse to follow me be spontaneous. May your fulfillment be out of love. 66. At this time I have seen all the congregations gather, forming a single crowd, to commemorate the date that this people swore obedience and union to me. But I ask you, have you fulfilled your oath? Have you been obedient to my commands and have you joined? No, people, you have not fulfilled, your oath was in vain. For what do you commemorate that date then? It would be more pleasant for me to see you distanced materially, although you never would gather to commemorate those traditions. But, instead, you would see yourselves spiritually united, form my doctrine and fulfill my word. Then you will be united in my work and it would be your strong union for love and truth, without having to comply solely because in your spirit you carry the weight of an oath. 67. I want that when the new people of Israel rise up to follow me, their pact be of love and of faith. 68. Do you understand why I have been abolishing all your traditions? Because busy in fulfilling them, you forget the true essence of your life, which is to obey my law. 69. I tell you that if before I finish my communication at this time, you do not join, nor forgive each other, you do not know the evidence that makes you shudder, reminding you of your falsehood and your disunity. 70. I see that you have become familiar with my word and that, when I speak to you in a tone of claim or counterclaim, you close your ears, trusting that in a few moments I will forgive you and speak to you with infinite sweetness. 71. Ah, people who have not wanted to keep the seed and who only seek delight in eating the fruit, what will become of you when you miss my word? Are you going to invent some way to fill your void? 
No, people, don't try to fool yourselves. Better keep my word in your heart from now on. Store it, and when you stop having my communication, you will be possessors of an inexhaustible flow of wisdom, of a source of health and peace, of a spring inexhaustible of blessings. 72. My word, as the appointed day approaches when you will stop listening to it, becomes clearer. Some of my spokespersons have reached maturity and as a reward for their preparation and for the people I spill my word, full of clarity and simplicity. 73. Before it was necessary to speak to you in a figurative sense, because the spokesmen were only qualified to speak in that form of the profound teachings of my truth. Behind every parable or figure there was always something divine or mysterious that the spokesman could not interpret. Later, when his spirituality and elevation made him understand his mission, the figurative sense disappeared from his lips because his understanding had already managed to express the elevated through simple language available to all minds and all spirits. My peace be with you.